holding for the eclipse. E minus 15 seconds and count. This is Houston at one minute, trajectory and guidance went good and the stage is good. Over. You want to check out North, he's your best friend. Jack doing something wrong on his EVA? <laughs> Nothing voice lessons wouldn't cure. Him. Here comes the sun. It's alright. Little darling. It's been a long, long, lonely winter. Oh boy. There she is. She is big, round, and she is on fire. It's all right. Da -da -da -da. Boy, they're gonna love these. <laughs> Woo! This is beautiful. Whatever happened to subtlety? Like one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind? <laughs> <laughs> oh, face it, Davis. Jack North is one of a kind. All of Solar disturbance monitor. Alert Jack and bring him in. What's going on? What's happening? Do you read me? Jack, do you read me? Come in. I'm not getting anybody stats on North.
two weeks in the coma and look at you. I feel a little tired. I feel bad about bringing the mission in four days early. Oh, no, we didn't find that lost satellite. Beats losing one of my best men. <laughs> and you, what's with this hero stuff, huh? I thought your old brains were no brawling. That's no big deal, cowboy. You'd have done the same for me. Yeah. Maybe. I <laughs> mean, maybe. <laughs> Come on. You can count on it. <clears throat> what's the point? Why go back to work right away? Well, I scanned out okay. Besides, what good's an astronaut training program without its physical instructor? You really want me to answer that? <laughs> hey, you tell your flabby PhD pals to get their jogging shorts on because Major North is back, okay? I'm back. <laughs> Ooh, they'll be happy to hear about that. Well, first, we gotta get over to the base for a debriefing. Then we get out of the cafeteria and get a bite to eat. Evan, we can do better than that. And he's got Jack's favorite dish in the oven. The kids are dying to see him. You guys got it all worked out, huh? through two for two weeks. What our boy needs is a home-cooked meal. All right, Jack, are you gonna fly back with me or are you going with Bill? <laughs> it's no contest, Evan. Given the choice, the cowboy will always choose a free meal. And they're right, Jack. His eyes. Look at his eyes. Ah! Searching for the security entrance code. There's over a thousand combinations. That's the number. What is the number? Thank you for coming over, Dr. Jans. The Institute is lucky you had the time. We managed to recruit the top expert for Jack's case. Uh, Dr. Taylor's waiting for us. Dr. Allison Taylor. This is Dr. Carl Jans. He's our institute's senior consultant. How do you do? I've heard all about your work, Dr. Jans. And I've heard all about you. They tell me you have the scientific reputation of somebody twice your age, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Um, I read your preliminary reports, and I understand your concern is justified. However, I do feel there's some room for excitement. We're talking about a man who just cracked your impenetrable code system in less than five seconds. I'm aware of the significance, Doctor. But I also want to make sure that Jack is going to be all right. Don't worry, I'm going to go over every inch of Major North. So from what you're saying, whatever happened was triggered by the sun's ultraviolet light? Well, that's what it seems. You mean I can't go outside? Not for the time being. Now, Major, could you mm -hmm. please describe to me just exactly how it felt? Well, <laughs> at first it was a terrifying feeling. But the remarkable thing was that it also felt good. I mean, it felt like I was powerful. Like I, like everything I touched, I could just start on fire. Hey, you know, you're the specialist here. Before I uh, hit you with all this, I'd like to know your game plan. Tests. Lots of tests. How many's lots? As many as it takes. What else? What else? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything else. I mean, I felt charged. You were excited. Yeah, it was like, it was like I was living my whole life in black and white. And all of a sudden, there it was, in blazing color. I mean, it was incredible. It was also damn scary. You were frightened. Yeah, well, what do you expect? I, I mean, I didn't know it was coming off, and all of a sudden, I just felt sort of exposed, you know, sort of vulnerable, sort of. Vulnerable. Right. What are you writing, a novel? No, I'm just taking down data. Well, I'm not talking data, okay? I'm talking feelings. From the very first test, Dr. Taylor treated me as if I were the greatest miracle in scientific history. 
When exposed to the sun's ultraviolet rays, my IQ accelerated to 1,000. It's estimated that Einstein only used 9% of his mental capacity, and here I am using 75% of mine. In order to go outside, Allison began work on a pair of chemically treated glasses, which would eliminate ultraviolet rays. I was warned not to look directly into the sun. It's harmful for anyone to look into the sun. But in my case, there's an additional factor. Not only might I go blind, but Allison told me that I'd be risking unknown dangers. As the tests continued, Allison discovered that artificial UV had no effect. This meant that I was powerless without sunlight, which also meant that I was powerless at night. I also discovered that I could solve mathematical equations faster than any computer. Allison told me that to see it for the first time was the most thrilling experience in her scientific career. As the tests progressed, scientists and military advisors from all over the free world descended on the Galileo Institute to observe me. But no one expected the ultimate, that I could command my brain to magnify my five senses. I could read a license plate from a point over a mile away. I could hear a whispered conversation across the length of a football field. I could hold my breath underwater for over an hour. And each day, I learn more. Even as a child, I dreamed of being a scientist. But never did I dream that I'd be a part of something so wondrous. <laughs> to me, Jack North is proof, fabulous proof of the potential in every man or woman. He is all of us. He is our future. But there is a price to pay. Every time Major North accelerates his mind, he becomes weary. The greater the intensity or duration of the accelerations, the more fatigued he becomes. As we continue to seek out the seemingly boundless limits of his potential, we must remember that Major North is only a human being. Boy, this pace is wearing me out. Hey, you're supposed to be a runner. I'm not a runner, I'm a jogger. I don't care what you call it, you're out of shape, pal. <laughs> hey, fellas! Fellas, we've got some great news! Nobel Prize! <laughs> he got it! 35 years researching this safe house, the inside of it finally paid off. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. My Nobel-nominated boss foolishly promised me 2% of the patent. Ah, in writing. <laughs> well, I can't imagine who'd want to patent an enzyme that adds 10 years to the human lifespan. Who'd want to do a thing like that? Hey, Bill, there's already a couple of reporters waiting for you and Carl. Hop on. Let's go, gentlemen. Off to fame and wealth and glory. Uh, <laughs> Got an idea. What? Why don't you run a few laps with me, huh? Oh, no. No, thanks. No. Uh -uh. Take off the jacket. Take it off. No, no. Major. Hey, what is it with you? What do you mean? Why can't we do something else together besides getting all tangled up in these wires, huh? Why not? I think we should talk. About what? About this Jekyll and Hyde stuff. When, I, when I've got my glasses on, you treat me like a piece of luggage. When I take them off, you're... When you accelerate, I find it exciting. Not you. Look, I don't mean to be pushy. I mean, uh... I don't know, I guess I've just been feeling by myself, and you seem to be by yourself a lot, and I thought maybe we could just help each other out. You don't know, do you? Know what? I'm married. You're married? 
Look, I'm sorry. I thought somebody would tell you. No, that's the best damn secret in this whole top secret place. How come you never said anything to me? You don't wear a ring? You never talk about him. Yeah. Dave is an anthropologist. He was part of that 12-man expedition that got lost in the Andes two years ago. Yeah, I remember that. Well, we were only married six months, but I still dream of the day when he'll come home. I feel like a fool for coming on so strong, for assuming. No, no, it's my fault. I probably wanted you to assume because a part of me needs to get on with my life. Get away from there. Hey, get away from there. Hey, you hear what I said? Get lost, man. You hear what I said? I said get away from the car. What are you going to do about it? Major, don't you dare. Get off. Set, Jack. Now, you've been unconscious for 24 hours. I couldn't control it. Oh, Major North, how are you feeling? Much better. Thank you. Good. Was she new? Kit, she's been here longer than anybody. You know that. Oh, yeah, I just couldn't place the face. Good morning. Good morning, Major. Doctor. Good morning. You feeling better? Yes. Uh, Evan tells me that you helped me out when I was out of control. Thank you. Well, I was just glad I was there to help. Jack, uh, Allison's been up all night running her data through the computer. I think you should listen to what she's got to say. Yeah, I'm all ears. Well, um, based on what I saw, I've broken your accelerations into three different categories, each reflected by the eye color which seems to accompany it. Blue stage is terrific. Everything you've ever learned becomes available to you again. 
and new knowledge is a moment away. In yellow stage, you're able to command your body beyond its normal limits. And although I can't prove it yet, I'm sure it causes memory loss, and it may even be taking months off your life expectancy. But stage three, red, that's when you're dangerously close to the point of no return major, risking brain damage, or maybe even death. Yeah. Which is why you are now under strict confinement to the Institute. Evan! Case closed. You're a walking time bomb. You're going to stay here until we learn how to solve Wait the problem, second. Jack. Major, every time you accelerate, you lose a piece of your past and risk a piece of your future. Hey, look, it's me you're talking to, Evan, okay? Now, you got a tough mission, life or death situation, call Major North. Well, I think it's time for a little payback. I'm asking for a favor. Don't confine me to this place. Jack. Come here, I want to show you something. I've been using this replicant to recreate what happened to you yesterday. Calculations, this is where you were during the chase. This is what Allison's computer projection says you just missed. to the base. Why? I wish I could explain it to you. It's top secret. It's okay, Jack. Listen, Janie, I'm sorry that I can't be there for you, but... You know, if there's anything else that I can do... There is. The police are sure that Bill's death was an accident. I don't believe it. Have you told them that? No. I need to talk to someone, someone I can trust. I need you, cowboy. I'll be there. Thanks. I don't know what I'd do without you. You've always been there when we needed you. I love Bill. I love you. 
I love the kids. They're gonna need their godfather now more than ever. Couldn't keep me away. You still feel sure it wasn't an accident? You know Bill's thing about heights. He'd never run along this path, never. Maybe he got lost. He ran up here every day for six years on our anniversary, the kids' birthdays. He knew every tree in here, every rock. He had the same routine, and he always took the same safe route. Here it is. You know, something happened to me up in space. Something that can help us now. Is there anything to be scared of? No. No, it's just that you'll be seeing some of my changes. They're a little unusual. I'm ready. student I was? When I take my glasses off, I can see the old chemistry books. I can see every word of it. And it all makes sense to me now. It's like everything I've ever learned, everything I've ever read, is suddenly just waiting for me. What are you doing? Doing what the police didn't do. Forensic study. substance is made up of a chemical. Every chemical has a unique signature. Now, as the fire ignites the dirt, the glass prisms out the chemical traces so that I can read them. We sulfur, potassium, carbon, pollen grains, it's not important. Iron oxide, no big deal. SiO2, common sand. their blood up here. men in the field and you come up with nothing? All right, keep the pressure on, Captain. I want every available man looking for Jack North. Sure have it. Never miss a game, huh? <laughs> uh, turn on your video camera. I'd like to see the expression on your face. <laughs> ah, that's better. <laughs> you know, those paintings of yours, they give art a bad name. How the hell are you doing this? Well, I digitalized the video into the computer, put it into an RF form, modulated an SHF carrier with a signal, sent out the addressing information on a subcarrier, and I stuffed it back up the line to you, Evan. What's wrong with the telephone? Because I know you. You tell me that you don't have a trace set up on this line. Well, for God's sake, at least uh, put on your glasses. <laughs> you know, I'm getting the hang of this, Evan. <laughs> 
for once in your life, don't push your luck. Now, what are you up to? I mean, and why won't you come back in? Because I needed proof that Bill was murdered. I've got it. Blood traces at the top of the jogging trail. At the top? No, I'm not going anywhere near the police. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, meanwhile, I've got a few things to check out. No go, North. That's a direct order. I want you back in here now. Can't do it. Look, I know what's at stake here, Evan. I know you care about me. I know your butt's in a sling. But I can't come in until this thing's resolved. I'm sorry. Hey, cheer up. I'm in good hands. Whose hands? Those hands belonging to the beautiful, talented Dr. Allison Taylor. Well, congratulations, Dr. Taylor, and good work. I have half my department in the field, and you made them look like a bunch of amateurs. Well, I didn't exactly... Isn't she something? Understand. And she's modest, too. You know, she tracked me down, I didn't have a chance. Good. Now, I want you both back in here now. As soon as possible. No later than midnight tonight. A Jack! But don't get any ideas, because I've got my own agenda. <sighs> you. You know, I nearly killed myself looking for you. I've been everywhere, every fast food stand, every country and western bar, and every low dive you've ever talked about. That's why I'm here. Last place anybody's gonna look for me is in your bedroom. You broke into my home. Oh, if you'd only offer me the key. And you trashed my computer. Look at this. Look. Hey, nobody's perfect. You know, I mean, it took me a little trial and error here. Think of it as a noble sacrifice for science. Oh, that's it, Major, that's it. When we get back, I'm going to make sure that everyone hears about this. And maybe you missed what I said to Evan. Bill was murdered. And nobody's going to stop me from checking it out. Bill was murdered? That's right. How do you know that? I'll explain to you later. Oh, no, no way, Major. You're not getting away from me. I'm going to stick to you like crazy glue. Jance's private lab. Uh, there was nothing in my research or in anything that Bill was doing that would make him a murder target. Well, I know he was murdered. It just doesn't make sense. Well, it must have had something to do with his work. I mean, what else was there? Well, who knows? I mean, maybe, maybe he had some kind of a secret life. Some people do. No, uh-uh, not Bill. Let me tell you something. I love Bill. Maybe not as much as you, but he and I worked hand in glove for five years. We were close. And the last thing I want to hear is how my work got him killed. That's not what Major North means, Dr. Jans. But my enzyme is going to allow the normal, healthy person to live 10 extra years. I mean, it's not as if we were working on some military contract here. This is a, it's an open lab. I, it's not even close to top secret. Look, look, I don't want to upset you, okay? I'm sorry. But I owe it to Jeannie and the kids to get this thing straightened out. No, I'm the one that's sorry. I, I'm not being helpful. I'd like to help. Well, did Bill keep his papers here? Yeah. Yeah, and you're welcome to look at them. We're We'd great. like that, thanks. We? Well, if I can't get you back to the Institute, the least I can do is help you. All right, one cup of coffee, but then it's back to the Institute. Yeah, I'll have one, too. All right, just don't get any ideas. The bar's right over there. Dr. Taylor. Is Jack still with you, Allison? Can't get rid of me, Evan. I'm his shadow. Look, we've been going through every scrap of Harlow's paperwork, and we keep coming up empty-handed. But, you know, Jack's accelerated memory capacity is incredible. Allison, where is Jack right now? He's in the living room. Why? Put him on. Okay. Evan, he's gone. He's what? What's going on? Uh, hold on, Allison. He took off again. Can I tell her? We got a letter about an hour ago from someone who says he killed Bill Harlow. Oh, no. And we think it's the real thing. It's full of a lot of stuff about the evil shuttle and its devil pilots. He calls himself the astronaut killer. Oh, Lord, not another loony tune. Well, this loony tune says he's going to kill Jack North next.
çöreceğini bir kez bırak. Hey hey, hey I got something for you. You might like to have a little, uh, a little moon rock. <laughs> you dance with the meteors, Billy? <laughs> did. How many people can say they did that? See me again. You know, you know, no one's gonna believe it was an accident. I mean, two astronauts in a row. Everyone's gonna know that it was murder. recognize a major someone who washed out of the shuttle program someone with a grudge he said he never saw him before we just want to be sure in any case we'll bring in some mug shots cranks crazies known psychopaths then we'll set up a trap maybe using the major as a lure meanwhile he stays here i'm gonna triple that's security enough. in the that is enough i'm sick and tired of being everybody's guinea pig that's it all right all right calm down we'll talk about it later come on i'll take you over to the head of security Thank God you're all right. Now, why are you being so stubborn? What are you trying to prove? Hey, slow down. I almost got myself killed tonight. You're talking to me like I'm a three-year-old. Look, you're too important to lose. <laughs> you speaking for the scientific world or are you speaking for yourself? You've got to let me help you. Do I? You know, I didn't exactly stand in line to be Einstein's smarter brother. I know. I know you're handling this as well as anyone would, but you've walked through a one-way door. Wrong. I was pushed. All right, all right, okay. I stand corrected. But you've got to come to terms with that. I'm trying. But it's not that easy. Now, what about you? Now, your life's been in limbo. How long are you willing to live like this? But I'd rather not talk about me. Now, you made me your project. Why can't I make you mine? Well, I guess I just don't see the point. The point? The point is, is I see a warm, beautiful woman trapped in her own situation, unable to grow, Unable to risk, to love. What do I have to do to get you to talk to me? Is it that important to you? I don't need a mental bodyguard. I need someone to care about. I need someone who cares about me when I'm just plain old 120 IQ Jack North. Why me? Why not somebody easy? Nothing's easy anymore. Oh, excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> I'll come back later. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Your glasses. Um, our tests have proven that your eyes don't respond to ambient ultraviolet light. However, I must warn you, don't look directly into the sun. 
You've already proven that you're dangerously close to losing it. And more importantly, you may cause severe damage to your eyes. Got it? Got it. How do they look? I like them. No, that's okay. I can manage. I'll be in early tomorrow to help you. Reasonably cool. That's good. Where'd you get this tape? Messenger, 20 minutes ago. There's no lead there. It was dropped off in one of those overnight depots. 11 a.m. gives us three hours. Three hours to do what? Well, this guy Becker suckered us last night. That means he's got brains. So now we give him no room to think. We're going to arrange a takedown. And wait, Becker wants to make a trade. Why don't we just play along with him? We don't make trades, Major North. All right, hold it. Now, Evan, I can help. You can also die. I'm sorry, Major. You're going to have to sit this one out. Let's move. I'll let you know the second it's over. Hey, wait a second. Where did they make this tape? Ask yourself that question. And where are they now while they're waiting for 11 a.m. to roll around? Wants a straight exchange. At 11 this morning, the boarded up gas station off Route 38. No outside interference. Jack has to come along. So tell Captain Marshall not to come charging in like Kubla Khan. Please. Do what Becker says. He tells me he'd be happy to kill me. <laughs> Becker breathing. I could hear the ticking of Allison's watch. That's amazing. I heard some strange metallic echoes like they were in a huge, a huge steel tank. Maybe in a basement, in a big building. Yeah, well, they were in something, that's for sure. There were no cars, there were no sirens, no external sounds whatsoever. You know, I think that I may have heard something you didn't. And what Allison said. I don't follow. In the first place, she called Marshal Captain. She knows he's a colonel. And isn't Kubla Khan a little literary for a woman held at gunpoint? You know, there's a poem called Kubla Khan, a very famous one. You know, Allison knows that Evan is crazy about paintings, yes, poetry. which is why he owns the poetic treasury. I'll speed read it. Oh, we ordinary mortals have a, have a thing called an index. Here. Kubla Khan in Xanadu... Did Kubla Khan, a stately pleasure dome decree... Yeah, go on. Don't you get it? To a scientist. What's a pleasure dome? This is crazy. We can't do this alone. We're not even sure this is the right place. Yeah. Cold for crying out loud. Well, let's take a shot. No 
wait a second. Take a deep breath. What do you smell? Pine trees, fresh air, your basic mother nature. What I smell is two weeks in the testing room with the same perfume. That's fantastic. But she definitely came this way. The scent of her perfume is stronger. Gosh, we've got a call for help now. Look, it's almost 11 a.m. Everyone's at the stakeout now. Besides, there's a chance that Becker may have gone alone, left it's, Allison behind. Look, look, look. If you're scared, why don't you stay out here? Come on, I'm coming. Come on, come on. and not kill his stuff is phony, huh? You're in on it with him? Let's just say Mr. Becker works for me. You knew I'd break down the ransom tape. I counted on it. Well, so much for the smartest man on earth then, huh? You know Alice is coming back. She's gonna be back here with Marshall. We'll find a dazed but unheard Dr. Chance and a very dead Jack Nord. Just get here quick. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Just hold tight. Look, they're still inside. What should I do? Get away from the dome. $50 million. That's what the patent on my enzyme is worth. I don't get the point. The point is that half of my lab rats develop third generation mutations. Who'd want to buy 10 extra years of life expectancy at the cost of deforming their grandchildren? But why murder Bill? The final computer analysis came while he was in space. He'd have found out soon. And we both know your moral friend couldn't be bought. You were that desperate? Son, I spent 35 years of my life on that enzyme. Without money, without recognition. Then came the Nobel nomination, and with it, the big money offers. I had no choice. Get it over with. Shut up, Becker. Hey, look, come it on. It would have worked out, except you had to interfere and prove that it was murder. 
That forced me to work fast. I had to come up with the astronaut killer. That worked out very well. Because by creating the fiction of a psycho, two vexing little problems were solved. Bill's murder was explained, and let me take care of you. The man with the 1,000 IQ. The only mind brilliant enough to expose my enzyme as a fraud. You must have just loved it, huh? Whenever you want us to keep working together, just you and I, for the good of all humanity.
I liked it better when you called me Major. Evan, come on, don't hold back. What's this proposition that's so hush-hush? Well, upstairs, they're calling it Operation North Star. Very simple. They come up with the occasional impossible problem, you sort it out. Hmm, catchy. Kind of a have brain will travel type of thing, huh? You don't have to agree to it. Uh, this is my life now, Evan. I, I want to do it. I'm pleased, Jack. You've got the ability to solve the most unique problems in the world. Operation North Star can help the government. It can help ordinary people. You can do good on many levels. Yeah, but I'm still that uh, walking time bomb. Just one tick away from exploding. We're working on that. And until we find an answer, we'll try to keep you in good hands. Sure, sure. We, uh, I think we work well together, but that doesn't mean I need a permanent partner. You know? Oh, it's Evan's idea, not mine. You've helped me out a lot, but partner, it's such a loaded expression. I mean, we're two independent people, right? I, I'm not arguing. Well, I am getting to like working with you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, oh, great. No problem. Mm. I think that's rather drastic, don't you? I call it being smart. Major. You could use these. I think I'm gonna draw it now, partner. Oh! <laughs> You're very funny. <laughs> 